Nobody can make ways out of no ways like God. Nobody can shut lying lips like God. Nobody can deal with your haters like God. Nobody can fight your battles like God. Nobody can stand strong by your side like God. When you give it to God, God says, I got it. As we prepare heart and mind to receive the word of God, the prayer that takes hold of us and controls our daily living, I would that you take a moment to bow and be in prayer with me. Lord, the songwriter said, Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let your goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Lord, we confess that all of us have wandered, but your mercy and your grace has always kept us and covered us and blessed us. And so we desire now, O oh God, to surrender our whole lives to you and ask in this preaching moment that your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Speak, Lord for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. amen. I'm gonna invite you to hear a reading of the word of God from the book of Joshua in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible. Joshua chapter six, there is a passage of scripture that may sound familiar to any of us who've been in Sunday school or church for a little bit of time. In the sixth chapter of Joshua, I want to begin reading in verse number one out of the New International Version, and it is our custom to ask those who are physically able to stand that together we might reverence the reading of the Word of God from Joshua chapter six, beginning in verse number one. It will appear on the screen for those that may not have Bible with you this morning. Now, the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one went in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up everyone straight in. In verse number 20, when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. As we hang out in that mighty work of God, do me a favor, play preacher. Find someone next to you and just lean next to him and tell him, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor, it's above me now. It's above me now. Yeah. It's above me now. For those that are social media savvy, <laughs> the title for today's sermon is of no surprise to you. For those that do not know where the title comes from, I need to introduce you to a 26-year-old African-American brother by the name of Craig Brooks. Craig Brooks works at, as a receptionist at a Holiday Inn Express in Austin, Texas. A few days ago, while Brother Brooks was on his shift, a woman called in needing to make a reservation for a room to help come and attend her mother's funeral. Craig informed the lady, as is the custom with most hotels, that reservations are no longer made at the reception desk at the hotel, but rather one must call the 800 number and be booked that way. He transferred her over, and very shortly, she called back. 
She was upset because she'd been put on hold and she wanted Craig to make her reservation. Mr. Brooks informed her once again that I'm not the one who makes the reservation. Let me kindly transfer you over to the 800 number he did. And shortly after, she called back again. This third time, she was angry, irate, and hostile. Craig Brooks recognized that this woman was angry, irate, and hostile, and he said to her, you know what, I'll take your information, I'll call the 800 number, I'll try to make the reservation, but I need you to calm down. The woman upset that Craig Brooks had the audacity to tell her to calm down while she was speaking to her husband, not realizing that she had yet to hang up the phone. She said and referred to Craig Brooks in a vulgar slang term that should not ever be uttered. She referred to him as a F word, N word. I'll let you fill in the blanks. I'm preaching, I can't. <laughs> Quoted directly. But this woman on the phone called Craig Brooks an F word N-word and hung up the phone. Craig Brooks immediately called corporate headquarters at Holiday Inn Express to share with them what had happened. And Holiday Inn said, we have a zero tolerance for racism. And you are well within your rights to deny her reservation. The woman, not content that she couldn't get a reservation, a few moments later showed up at the hotel, brought her daughter and husband with her. Craig Brooks was there at the desk, decided to pull out his phone and film what was about to go down. <laughs> and this is what he said. He said, ma'am, I cannot give you a reservation. You call me a F word, N word. He said, the best Western is across the street. <laughs> the lady said, no, I want a reservation here. And this is all Craig Brooks said in response. It's above me now. She got upset. She said, I need a reservation. He said, ma'am, I can't do anything. It's above me now. She said, I apologize for calling you an F word, N word. He said, it's above me now. Her daughter got involved in the conversation, said, please give us a room. He said, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. It's above me now. And Craig Brooks modeled for us what I want to preach, and that is that every now and then, there are some people and some things you cannot engage yourself with but you simply got to turn it over to the hands of one who is above you and trust that when you put it in the hands of one who is above you, he is well able to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. I feel like preaching right here, right about now, that there are some moments when you've just got to put it in the hands of God. There's some circumstances you got to put in God's hands. There's some people you've got to put in God's hands. There are some issues you've got to put in the hands of the Lord. There's some circumstances you've got to put in God's hands and simply tell everyone, it's above me now. I've given it over to God. I put it in God's hands and I'm going to let the Lord work this thing out. Can I preach right here? If you've not lived long enough, let me testify at the ripe old age of 47 that I have found out, beloved, that there will be some circumstances in your life that you cannot handle. There will be some issues you cannot control. There's going to be some sickness you can't find your way out of. There are going to be some people you cannot change. There are going to be some enemies you cannot defeat. And in that moment, can I give you some good advice? Put it in the hands of God because God is able. When you find yourself dealing with a circumstance, that you've got to put in the hands of God. I want you to remember what goes down right here in Joshua chapter 6. In the sixth chapter of Joshua, the children of Israel find themselves in a circumstance that they've got to put in God's hands. Come on back to Jericho, if you will. The children of Israel have been delivered out of their bondage in Egypt. The Lord has made a way 
through the Red Sea. The Lord has kept them with manna from on high in the wilderness. The Lord has led them through danger seen and unseen. And now here they are on the brink of the promised land. Moses is dead, but God is faithful. And God has decided to finally fulfill a promise that God made to Abram some hundreds of years ago that his descendants would occupy the promised land of Canaan. And in Joshua chapter 6, it's about to go down. The children of Israel stand ready to move into Canaan, the promised land, but the problem is that Canaan is occupied which means that the cities must be conquered. And the very first city they've got to deal with is Jericho. Now, you've heard about Jericho. You know about the walls of Jericho. You remember that spiritual Joshua fit the battle of Jericho and the walls come tumbling down. The children of Israel are here and they realize they've got a problem. Jericho is well fortified. As a matter of fact, Jericho's walls are so impenetrable that if you would go to the promised land today, like many of us had the blessed privilege of doing last year, you will see the remains of the wall are still around the city of Jericho. What was built thousands of years ago is still present today. Jericho's walls prevented this city from ever being captured. Allow me to share with you how the city was constructed. Jericho sat on top of a small hill. And in the Bible and in Israeli culture, these small hills are called tells, T-E-L. So when you hear the city Tel Aviv, that is a city that sits on top of a hill. Teach the Bible, Pastor Wesley. <laughs> they sit on top of a tell. And when one comes down the hill, at the bottom of the hill, the residents of Jericho had built a wall embankment that sat 15 feet high. On top of that 15-foot wall, they then built another 26-foot wall that was six feet thick. And so at the base of Jericho, one had to look up at a wall that was about 41 feet high. And if by chance you scale the wall, you then had to drop down 41 feet to begin a journey up a hill where the residents could see you coming and you were vulnerable because they had the high ground. If by chance you made it to the top of the hill, there was another 46 foot wall that was built to protect the city. So you had to jump over the first wall, fall all the way down, climb up the hill and ascend another wall, which is why Jericho had never been conquered. Because nobody could conquer the walls. And to make matters worse, not only were the walls high, but the soldiers of Jericho were experienced veterans. They knew how to defend the city. And to make matters worse, here come the Israelites. They are recently out of slavery. They've never fought a battle in their life. They have no military experience. They have no weapons comparable to the army of Jericho. They ain't got a sword, a spear, ain't even a slingshot among them. And here they are with walls and soldiers and they have no experience and they have no weapons, but they have God. And I tell you that when you are outnumbered and when your resume doesn't match their resume and your bank account doesn't match their bank account, don't you worry because if you've got God on your side, I'm a living witness that with God on your side, God will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Is there anybody here that knows about a that can level the playing field, a God that brings victory for those who have nothing on their side. They've got God. And while they're looking up at the walls 
and seeing the residents of Jericho, God shows up. And let me tell you what God tells them in the Howard John Wesley version of the Bible. God shows up in Joshua 6, this is what God says. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Beloved, ain't nothing better than knowing God's got it. So I came by to tell you, nobody can handle walls like God. Nobody can move enemies like God. Nobody can make ways out of no ways like God. Nobody can shut lying lips like God. Nobody can deal with your haters like God. Nobody can fight your battles like God. Nobody can stand strong by your side like God. When you give it to God, God says, I got it. Joshua, don't, don't, don't sweat the walls. I got this. Put it in my hands. Tell Israel the wall is above them now. God says, watch this. I'll handle the wall, but there's something I need you to do for me. Um, I want you to give me the walls, but, but I have some instruction for what I expect you to do. Uh, uh, don't, don't just pray and give it to me and go watch Real Housewives. No, that's not the way this works. <laughs> Put it in my hands, but then watch God tells Israel, there's something I want you to do. Watch what the Lord says, three instructions. God says, after you give it to me, I want you to march around the walls of Jericho. Um, I, I want you to take a tour of the wall, the one I'm gonna take down. Walk around the wall and take a look at it. Now, you, we've been taught erroneously in Sunday school that they marched seven times. No, they didn't march around the wall seven times. They marched around 13 times. Because the Bible says God told them, listen, for six days, get up every morning and take one walk. On the seventh day, go around seven times. Now, in case you're mathematically slow, six <laughs> plus seven is 13. Brother LC, the Lord says, watch this, walk around the wall 13 times. Now, why in the world would God tell Israel, walk around the wall 13 times? Well, one scholar suggests it's for reconnaissance, that, that they're preparing for a military invasion. And so they're taking 13 trips so they can see what they're really standing against. And, and although that sounds smart, it really doesn't make sense because it seems to me that after the first walk, they knew everything they need to know. <laughs> um, after the first tour of the wall, they already knew this wall is bigger than us. It only took one time to know we can't handle this thing. And yet the Lord says, go around 13 times and take a look at the wall. Now what you ought to be asking is, why does the Lord want them to walk around the wall 13 times? Few answers come up. Number one, could it be that God wants them to clearly see the obstacle that is in front of them. I want y'all to get it clear in your mind how big this wall is. I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you cannot bring this wall down by yourself. I want you to know this wall is strong. So, so watch what happened. They got up on Monday. They took a walk around the wall. And when they came back, I know what happened. Somebody came up with an idea of how we're going to win this battle and tear the wall down. So they thought about it on Monday. They got up on Tuesday, took another walk, and came back and said, nope, that idea ain't going to work. What else you got? <laughs> so they came up with another idea on Tuesday, took a walk, came back, said, nope, that ain't going to work either. Now we've seen the wall. They took another walk, and by Thursday, they had come to the conclusion, we cannot break down this wall by ourselves. This wall is bigger than us. This wall is stronger than us. This wall has never fallen before. We can't do this by ourselves. 
And the Lord says, that's exactly where I want you to be. I want you to be in a place where you acknowledge this wall cannot come down by your own power so that when I bring the wall down, you won't walk into the sanctuary talking about, look what we done did. No, when this wall comes down, you will know it couldn't have been anybody other than God. Hear me, beloved. Every now and then, God wants you to have crystal clear clarity on what you cannot do by yourself. That's a word, because somebody, you're walking around that wall right now, and every time you take a look at that situation, it gets worse. Every time you go to the doctor, the diagnosis ain't changed. Every time you have the meeting, you find out how bad this thing really is. Every time you look at it from another angle, you see another issue that you cannot handle, another problem you cannot solve, another enemy you did not plan on, another bill you ain't got the money for, and you're wondering how in the world can this get any worse? And God says, don't you get frustrated. That's exactly where I want you to be. I want you to see that you can't handle this. I want you to know it's not within your power. I want you to know it's great greater than you, so that when I make the way out of no way, when I bring the wall down in your life, when I bring you through this storm, when you're healed in spite of what they said, you'll walk in the sanctuary and shout, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Lord says, I want you to see that you can't handle it so when it comes down, you know who did. You didn't make it because of your resume. <laughs> this wasn't no money you had in your bank account. Girl, it wasn't that medicine you took. That wasn't just the doctor you went to go see. That wasn't the lawyer you had on your side. The reason you made it through that situation, the reason you made it over that wall, the reason you're still standing today is because you can look back and declare that the Lord showed up and the Lord did what my money could not do. The Lord did what my friends could not do. Is there anybody in Alfred Street who's got a testimony of what the Lord has done in your life? Nobody but God made a way. Nobody but the Lord brought me through. Uh, do me a favor. No, somebody told me it had to be God. It had to be God. I, I, I got to move. I got to move. The, the Lord says, I, I want you to show out. I want you to walk around because I want you to see what you're dealing with. Watch this. And I want what you're dealing with to see you. Oh, oh, oh. I, I want them to see you. C come on back to Joshua 6. Uh, they're walking around the wall. And you got to remember the army of Jericho is sitting on top of the wall. So they, they sitting on top of the wall watching Israel walk around the wall. And I know somebody said, why these fools keep showing up every day? Don't they know we got them beat? Don't they know they'll never conquer this? Don't they know the odds are against them? Yet they keep showing up every day to take a walk down that wall. God said, Lynn, I want you to show up because with me, avoidance can never lead to deliverance. You can't pray about it and then run from it. No, no. Lord says, you can't put it in my hands and then disappear that one of the signs you trust God is that when you give it to God, you show up at the thing anyway. 
You show up at the meeting. You show up at the doctor's office. You show up at the report. I'm going to show up. Uh, Lord says, I want them to see you so they can see some people, watch this, who are not afraid of the wall. Uh, this is why I need you to show up. Because I need somebody to know ain't no scared in you. I need somebody to know you believe Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And I ain't scared of nobody and no thing because God is on my side. Believe it, beloved, what we need most right now are some courageous Christians, some folk who pray and show up. And I ain't scared of you. I ain't worried about this. I'm not running from this. Oh, because there's some people in life who mistakenly think that because you go to church and because you read your Bible and because you know all the lyrics to Amazing Grace, that when it goes down, all you're going to do is go to your prayer closet and cry yourself to sleep at night. Baby girl, brother man, I came by to tell you something. Don't let this Bible make it twisted. Don't, don't let this collar fool you. Don't, don't let this robe make you think I'm scared. I will show up at the meeting. I will walk in the office. I'll walk right by your cube, wave at you, say may the Lord bless you, and keep on moving. Would you touch somebody and tell them you got to show up? Oh, oh, Lord says, listen, show up. I want you to see it and I want it to see you. So watch this. You're not going to like point two. He says, show up and shut up. <laughs> oh, it's in the Bible. Listen, I want you to walk, but Marcia, I don't want you to say a word. Six days, walk around and watch your mouth. It's almost like the Lord saying your problem is you. That's what I say, he's talking to you right now. He tell you, you, you. You, 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 you talk too much. One sign of immaturity is you're always running your mouth. So the Lord said, listen, take a walk. Don't say a word. Now, now I, I, had to, I had to wonder, I was wrestling with this thing, Dean Knowles. I was wondering, why, why would the Lord tell them to walk but don't say anything? Um, well, I, I couldn't understand that. I was reading the Bible and I couldn't understand why the Lord said don't talk until I remembered that they just like y'all. Um, and, and, and if they are just like y'all, um, then I know what happened. I know, I know what happened um, because every time they took a walk, somebody had something to say. Because you, you, know you know how they are. Every time I take a walk, someone got to come back. We ain't never going to get that done. <laughs> Somebody ran their mouth. Girl, I don't know. How, uh, they must be crazy. The Lord didn't tell us to take down this wall. Who led us over here? This, this, this can't be the way the Lord. Uh, what in the world? Who, who voted on that? Uh, <laughs> and here's why the Lord demands silence. Watch this. Because too many of us, we negatively impact our victory by what comes out of our mouths. He hear me, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, that life and death is in the power of the tongue, that what you speak can abort God's vision, what you say can delete what God's trying to do. You've got to be careful of what comes out of your mouth. 
And so listen, I need y'all to be quiet because all that negative talk is going to diminish the victory I want to bring into your life. There's some things you can think, but then there's some things you should never say. You can think it's impossible, but you ought to say with God, nothing is impossible. You can think it will never end, but you ought to say weeping only endures for a night and joy comes in the morning. You may think that they've got you outnumbered, but you ought to say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Watch your mouth. Stop killing your own victory with your words. And listen, the next time you're tempted to complain, the next time you're tempted to say something negative, the next time you're tempted to say what can't be, here's all you got to do. It's above me now. Because listen, you can't give something to God and then keep talking about what ain't going to happen. You, you, you can't put it in God's hands and say what will never be. You can't say you trust God and are always talking negative about what God's called you to do. The Lord says, show up and shut up. So I want you to come and walk. I want you to be quiet. And then I like this last one. Marcy says, now, you do that for six days. But on the seventh day, I want you to do something different. He says, what do on the seventh day? On the seventh day, um, I want you to line up. Um, I want you to get the trumpets and I want you to march around seven times. And, and, and I want the trumpet players to play while they're walking. Um, and on the seventh time, have them get out a loud blast. Um, and when the loud blast comes, Joshua tell the people, I want everybody to shout. Uh, I, I want everybody to open their mouth uh, and bless me right there. I, I want everyone to open their mouths and give thanks right there. I, I want everybody to open their mouths and, and praise the Lord in that place. I want everybody to make a shout at the wall. Well, well, no, Latasha, I'm sorry. That's not what he said. The Lord said, tell the army to shout. Stay with me. The Lord says, Joshua, tell the army to shout. Not the Levites, not the priests, not the liturgical dancers, not the choir, not the preacher, the army. Joshua, tell your military men, I want them to open their mouths and shout. Now I know why that's problematic, because I know what happened. Because I know y'all and I know them. And so I can see Joshua going to the military men and say, listen, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. The Lord told me to tell you that when you hear the trumpet, the Lord says, I want you to make a shout. And if I know the army like I know y'all, some of those men look back at Joshua and say, hold on, we don't do that. Uh, that's for the Levites. All that shouting and carrying on, that's for the sisters in the choir, oh, that giving God praise, that's for the apostolic church down the street, all that carrying on, that's for them Pentecostals down the road, but, but we are out for Street Baptist Church. <laughs> and uh, when we come to worship, uh, we've gotten our hair done on Saturday. I got my nails done. I don't come for, if I wanted that, I would have stopped at that storefront church down the way. I come here to sit and act dignified because whenever there's a gathering, there's always somebody who thinks they are excused from giving God a shout. There's always somebody who thinks that when the Bible says make a joyful noise, it meant for somebody else. There's someone who thinks when the Bible says, let the redeem of the Lord say so, that's for that brother over there. But when I come to church, I'm too dignified for that. I'm SES, I'm GS13, I'm CEO, I'm COO, and I sit in church and act dignified. And God says, that's all right. You can sit and be dignified. But if you want the walls to come down, if you want a way to be made, 
If you want the blessing to come, you can't sit every Sunday, but at some moment, you've got to make a decision. I will bless the Lord. to go. It's almost our power. But can I give you the real shout? The Lord says, I want the army to shout. And watch this. I want them to do it before the wall comes down. Huh. There's some folk that can praise God after the wall is down. But then there's some folk that know that God is so good and God is so worthy and God is so strong that I can praise him with the wall in front. I can bless him while I'm still sick. I can shout while I'm still broke. shake. The ground began to move. Because when you praise God, the wall starts to shake. When you give him glory, the wall starts to shake. When you bless his name, the wall. Hey! 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 I need somebody Praise literally activates God's promise. Someone today, here it is. You've been waiting on God. God says, I've just been waiting on you. I, I want to know that you can praise me for who I am, even with a wall in front of you, that you can give me thanks when I haven't answered the prayer yet. That God is such a fulfiller of his promise. Watch this, I'm done. The Lord told Joshua, take a look around the wall and before the wall came down, this is what God said, I've already given it to you. Now I need you to trust that even though you see the wall, that's in my hands. I got that. I need to know, can you bless me even when I haven't taken it down? Lord, I thank you that, that it's above me now. They are above me now. This thing is in your hands. And so, Lord, I'm going to show up. I wanted to know that I'm not afraid, I'm not scared, I'm not running. And, Lord, I've learned to be silent until I can speak words of faith and affirmation. Lord, I'll just point up and say it's in your hands. And I can bless you even before the wall comes down. Thank you, Lord that it's in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. As the word of God begins to settle in our spirits, somebody you're already feeling what the Lord is calling you to do, to surrender your life completely to the Lordship of Jesus Christ.